This is Story Robot. Welcome to r slash nuclear revenge. Our first story of today is, was told this belonged here. Beep tries to destroy my orchard, I destroy her life. Well, let's start a few years in the past. My great grandparents planted an orchard, it is now at least 120 years old. My grandparents and my parents were really proud of the peach trees growing in it and did their best to keep them in good health and well. We always threw a big party when the peaches were ready to be harvested and invited all of our friends and neighbors to it. I loved those parties. The neighbors on the property to the south of our orchard were particularly fond of our peaches. They were a bunch of fine old people and me and the old man, Sam, were pretty good friends. He taught me a lot about woodworking with hand tools only and we had some great evenings in his workshop and we finished many good whiskies in there together. In return he got a lot of fine peaches, marmalade, homemade peach liqueur etc. Sadly he died a good 10 years ago, cancer is a real beep hole. His wife followed soon after, many suspected it was of a broken heart. They had no kids, so all of their property was left to the state, except his tools and whiskey collection, which he had gifted me a few weeks before he died. In comes Karen. The name speaks for itself. Haircut, attitude, bitchiness. The whole deal. She bought the property of my late neighbors. We hadn't had the kind of money to buy it at that time, as we had met some dire straits the years before and all our savings were gone. The first thing she did, before she actually moved in, was to go round and making demands of the neighbors on the surrounding properties. When it was finally our turn to listen to her gibberish, she told us that we needed to remove half of the trees, as the leaves were blowing on her property. We told her in a polite way, that we won't comply to her demands as the orchard is a vital part of our family heritage, tradition, life and has been there for at least 120 years. She was pretty pissed, but did nothing for the time being. There are some things you need to know before I continue with the story. The workshop I mentioned before, was situated right at the border to our property. It was a small timber frame building, at least 160 to 180 years old. The regulations in my state are pretty strict concerning old structures. Every structure over 100 years is protected and you need a special permission to tear it down. Failing to get this permission can lead to a hefty fine. To get the permission to build a new building, it has to be up to code and you have to ask your surrounding neighbors and if they agree, you're good to go. Except there is one speciality in my county. You have to keep a certain distance to the border of the property to allow emergency services full access to your property. If one of these requirements isn't met, the building is illegal or at least only partially legal and can actually be ordered by court to be torn down. That might come in handy later. So, back to my Karen. After our first encounter with her, she did her best to pester the whole neighborhood. She got the neighbor's dog put down, because he allegedly attacked her brat. It later turned out she faked the attack. The dog was the sweetest and most innocent dog you could imagine. A Bernese mountain dog, big, but a real teddy bear. Anyways, she later got us to stop doing our annual peach parties, as she called the police every time for various reasons. Noise complaints, we had a band playing there in the afternoon, arson, we lit a fire in a designated fire pit in the middle of our property, she called the ATF on us, allegedly making moonshine, my dad had a license to distill for our own consummation, in short, she was a real pain in the beep and after three years we decided it wasn't worth it to deal with various officers and law enforcement agencies every time we threw the party and we decided to quit. After she had reached this goal, she resorted to pestering us to remove the orchard. We didn't cave in and some things started to get really fishy. Somehow the tires of our trucks got slashed, eggs got thrown on our farmhouse, our cat disappeared and surfaced a few days later in pretty rough condition. It looked like somebody had tried to cut his tail off. Don't worry, he healed up completely, but we actually couldn't prove that she did all that. Then came the day she made her biggest mistake. She had a company come in in a sort of secret operation and tear down the old woodworking workshop overnight. Two days later, they started building a big garage, recreational center, house right where the shop was, but she missed one fine detail, which got pretty important later on. She didn't ask for our permission, nor for the neighbors. A short while after, the trees right next to her property started to get sick. The leaves turned brown in the middle of summer, and the branches started to die. We lost four trees, before we figured out the cause. Somebody had driven long copper nails into them. We had a suspicion, but we couldn't prove it. So we put up some trail cameras perfectly legal, as it was on our own property. We caught her red-handed. My dad confronted her, she apologized and my dad, being the way too nice guy he is, wanted to let her get off the hook. But not me. The nail she drove into our oldest tree was the final nail to her coffin. I started to investigate. I had some friends at the administration of our county and asked them to do some inquiries. Turned out she hasn't applied for permission to tear down the old shop, nor for permission to build a new building. 
I further did some inquiries on the borderline of our property. Turned out, the old markers vanished over time and her building was about three feet on our property. After I had gathered all this information, I presented it to my parents. At first they were reluctant as they didn't want to start a neighborhood clash. But after I recalled all the things she did to us and our neighbors, they were in. So let the games begin. First we called the authorities on her for tearing down a protected building and presented them with all the evidence we gathered. Then we called the building authorities on her for building a building without permission, not up to code, and not only didn't she keep the required distance to the property border, she also built on our property without our permission. Long story short, turned out the workshop hasn't only been protected because of its age, but also because it was a historical landmark, which played a vital role in a conflict back in the 1860s. She got sued for this, and had to pay a fine of an equivalent of about $150,000. She further had to demolish her newly built building, costing an additional $50,000, got fined for this too, about $83,000, and had to rebuild the workshop on her own expense which was another whopping $154,000, as it had to be period correct up to the smallest detail. Means it had to be built with the correct materials, with hand tools only and to the correct dimensions. As you can imagine, paying professionals to build quite a large timber frame building only by hand gets pretty expensive pretty fast. So, all in all, it cost her an equivalent of $437,000 plus further expenses as lawyers etc. This caused her to go bankrupt so she had to sell the property in the end, which my parents bought, by the way. Last I heard of her was that she moved back to the big city. The last story of today is, pick your battles a little more carefully. So basically, I moved into a two-bedroom apartment two months ago with Sarah and Jessica, names changed. Now, Sarah is on the lease, Jessica is Sarah's girlfriend and isn't on the lease. I pay 50%, Sarah pays 25% and Jessica pays 25% of rent. Not my ideal situation but I was desperate for roommates at the time. Fast forward two months, they're enormous slobs who never do anything so I clean up after them all the time. I vacuum the living room, mop the kitchen, do dishes, etc. I buy most of the shared groceries and household items like TP, which the two of them plow through really quickly. Sarah has a cat in the apartment which is unauthorized, and regularly has an unauthorized dog here too. Their rent is paid late in utilities on the last possible day. Also, the girls smoke copious amounts of weed and while I don't care, I ask them to be respectful enough to air out the apartment and keep the smoke out of my room. Now last week beep goes south, Sarah and Jessica overheard me bitching about having to clean up after them and after ignoring me for a few days, sent me a long text about how rude they considered that, etc. So, I let out everything that was bothering me, and tell them that if they don't want to live with me, I'll gladly release them from the lease, repay the deposit, and they can go. This causes them to freak out and they tell me, it's two against one, we will force you to move. Oh beep no. I blocked them on all forms of social media and means of communication. The next day, I went down to the apartment managers and reported the two unauthorized pets and the unauthorized occupant. Written notices were given, Sarah and Jessica threw them straight in the trash. I return from a four-day stay at my dad's and go straight to report the unauthorized occupant Jessica, who has already once been asked to leave, and both unauthorized pets which were supposed to be gone by now. Well, at this point Sarah and Jessica are getting pissed off. Jessica screams obscenities at me anytime I enter or leave my bedroom. Twice she spent a half hour period pounding on my door and the walls of my room. She taunts me through the door trying to get me to open up. All of this is being quietly recorded on my phone while I still haven't said a word. So yesterday, I went back down to the office to finish securing my new apartment and to report more violations. When I came home, the chain lock was locked so I had no way to get in. This is what I had been waiting for. Jessica taunts me again, on video, and then slaps my hat off my head, hitting me square in the forehead with the back of her hand. Bingo. The revenge, I call the cops, rat Sarah and Jessica out for being druggies, get all their paraphernalia confiscated, and get a police report for battery. Come Monday, I'll be on my way to the prosecutor's office to press charges. The apartment managers will also be getting a copy of this report. Also, tomorrow is the last day to pay rent before it's late. Sarah and Jessica disappeared early this morning. If they don't pay rent I'm going to get them on the abandonment clause, finally get them evicted, and have the locks change. All before I move out tomorrow. Thank you for watch- Error, error, error. Problem detected. Not enough subscribers. Please subscribe like and comment.